Welcome to the third homework video. Hopefully you've managed to complete all of homework two by this point and have gone familiar with GLSL and shading. In this week's homework, you'll be expanding your GLSL skills and will implement foveated rendering, depth of field rendering, and anaglyph stereo rendering. Before you start on the homework, make sure to update the screen diagonal global variable in render.js. This is necessary for making the different sections work with the different window sizes. In the first programming part, you will implement foveated rendering. The goal of foveated rendering is to take advantage of the non-uniform sampling on the retina to reduce rendering time. You can toggle into the foveated rendering mode by clicking the mode button in the top left of the screen or by pressing 2 on your keyboard. Once you have implemented a full solution for section 2.2, you will see something like this. Because we don't have an eye tracker, we're going to abstract where you're looking at on the screen with the black marker. You can move it around by dragging your mouse while holding the shift key. With foveated rendering implemented, if you sit a distance away from the screen as specified by the distance screen viewer parameter in render.js and look at the black marker, you should see minimal differences when you toggle between the standard and foveated modes. It's okay to see some changes in aliasing. This is currently a limitation of WebGL when performing multipass rendering. Next, you'll implement depth of field rendering. The purpose of this post-processing step is to mimic the depth of field that you perceive in the real world to make the scene seem more realistic. You can toggle into the depth of field rendering mode by clicking on the mode button in the top left of the screen or by pressing three on your keyboard. Again, the black marker is going to be a proxy by which we know where you're looking to on the screen. Using the marker, we can pick the depth of the object directly beneath it to simulate the focusing distance. You can see that objects in the scene close to the simulated focusing distance are sharp, while those farther away, in front of or behind, get blurred out, just as they do in the real world. The double for loop implementation of depth of field rendering which you will implement is compute heavy, so don't be surprised to see a drop in FPS. The final part of the programming assignment is anaglyph stereo rendering. You'll finally see your first teapots in 3D. You can toggle into anaglyph mode by clicking on the mode button in the top left corner of your screen or by pressing 4 on your keyboard. Once you have implemented the correct view and projection transformations for each eye, as well as a color channel multiplexing, all described in section 2.4, you will see something like this. If everything is implemented correctly, you will see the teapots pop out of the screen when wearing your anaglyph glasses. Notice that close to the zero disparity plane, there's a little shift between the color channels and how the color channel shift flips depending on whether the object is in front of or behind the zero disparity plane. Good luck and make sure to come to office hours or post on Piazza if you have any questions.